I've spoken before about how difficult it can be to remove a default judgment that's been entered against you. And usually you can only do that if you can show that you were never served with a copy of the lawsuit. But sometimes the court can set aside a judgment it's entered for other reasons. There's a case I had recently, credit acceptance versus Williams. Credit acceptance, as you might know, is a automobile finance company. They purchase automobile sales contracts. And so my client bought a car back in 07. She made payments for about four years, then the car broke down. Didn't have a warranty because she bought it new. I mean, she bought it used and the dealer didn't provide any warranties. So she was gonna have to pay four grand to fix it. Rather than do that, she just let them have it back. Well, they claimed that she still owed 11,000 bucks on the loan. So they sued her. She got served with a copy of the complaint asking for $11,000. She didn't answer it. So 30 days goes by with no answer. They move for a default judgment. And so the judgment gets entered against her. Her employer gets served with a garnishment, but the judgment amount is $20,000. So naturally she wonders, how does that happen? I'll tell you how it happened. Because credit acceptance's employee up in Michigan, some custodian of records who filed an affidavit with the court said that they were entitled to interest at 24% beginning New Year's Day 2012. Well, that's impossible because the vehicle wasn't even sold at the repossession auction until July 2013. So the claim, the amount of the debt wasn't even determined until a year and a half after they alleged they were collecting interest on that exact amount. The affidavit was obviously false. Well, fortunately, they didn't get away with it. Because Rule 60B3 of the Alabama Rules of Civil Procedure and the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure says that you can vacate a judgment for fraud upon the court. What does that mean? Basically, it means someone lied to the court and used that lie to convince the court to enter a judgment. That's what happened in this case. So I filed a motion to vacate it. I pointed out the specific defects in the affidavit. It was obvious to the judge, and he granted our motion. So... If you have a default against you, or if you have clients that are facing this issue, don't give up and don't think that just because they were served, there's nothing you can do about it. Because you can do something about it. The courts don't like to see the justice system perverted into something that benefits anyone who's willing to lie in an affidavit. So, don't go down without a fight.